So, uh, I'm back with another video on the RTX 3060 Ti overclock. Uh, it was suggested under the last video that I should try some undervolting on the card because we were running into the power limit so severely. With the idea being that um, if I undervolt the card, the power consumption goes down, which means we run into the power limit less, which means that the card can boost higher, and hopefully that extra boost will be worth more than the uh, headroom that we lose from the lower resulting operating voltage. Um, so here I am. It just crashed, so it doesn't do 2055, <laughs> as you can see. Um, so let's get into the settings a bit. So I have have it set to 975 uh, millivolts. Uh, that is as far as I know the lowest voltage that you can set it to without it uh, going weird. Like I thought Ampere does 950 too, but I tried 950 and it would just go to 1.1 volts instead. So if I um, go any lower than 975, just like curing, it apparently breaks the undervolt setting. Um, so yeah, so uh, 2055 crashed immediately. So let's try something like 2010. which will hopefully work better. Um, and once this starts, we will see our power consumption. And uh, yeah, well, let, let, let's see um, if our clocks are more steady, if they are higher than before. And uh, I wonder how much power we are saving here, because again, this is a reference PCB card, um, and it has a 220 watt limit. And it even has a thing where it doesn't actually want to go over 200, even if 110 power limit uh, is selected, um, which might indicate some per rail power limits or whatever. So let's hope that this now runs, because if it doesn't, then I'm pretty sure. Okay, it does run. And we're actually not power limited. Only 100 and, yeah, 180 watts. Um, and we have a very steady core clock. So the only thing, so it, it, it does go down because it's still on air cooling and the temperature is gonna creep higher. But um, the only, th like this looks like we're gonna have higher quark locks than before, so it should perform better. I just saw some artifacts on the left. We uh, might actually be at the limit already. Um, but there's one thing that could still lead to our performance actually being worse, and that is clock stretching. So clock stretching is a thing that NVIDIA cards do. Uh, it's been especially severe on the 28 nanometer generations, so like 600, 700, 900 series, um, where if your voltage is lower, you might get the same core clock, but you will get less performance per megahertz at less voltage. So if you keep the core clock the same and just raise the voltage, your performance would go up. And 10, 20, and 30 series also do this, However, in my testing, uh, I tested 20 and 10 series, they did it a lot less severely than, uh, say, a 780 Ti, where you could lose up to 50% performance by setting your voltage not high enough. Um, whereas on 20 and 10 series, it was more like 5% at most, I think. So, let's see. Um, it did finish the GPU test. We did see artifacting again. Um... But uh, yeah, let's let's see what this does. I mean, the the power draw is very promising. Only 188 watts. That is, um, we might actually be able to go a little higher than 975 and still not run into the power limit at all. Um, that might give us a little bit more uh, core clock. But um, yeah, so far we can already say that undervolting these reference PCB cards is gonna make your core clock a lot more stable. If it's actually gonna lead to better performance, um, we'll see at the end of the video. So let's let this finish. And uh, I guess we'll find out how good the performance is. Um, and I'll tune it a little bit after that and uh, then be back with the final results in a different clip once this finishes. So let's show the score. Yeah, that's not a good score. Also, why is my physics score so trash? That is a really bad physics score. And I'm at... 
Oh, I'm only at 5.2, maybe that's why. But my RAM is at, like, like this should get to, like, 24,000. Yeah, and that's pretty low. That's uh, about 3,000 points less than without the Undervolt. So, for now, performance kind of sucks. So, I'm gonna do a little bit more tweaking on this. Uh, and once I can't get any more performance out of it, uh, I'll be back and show you whatever I was able to achieve and whether undervolting actually does anything for a card like this that is so severely power limited. So I now have spent some more time trying to optimize the undervolt on the card. However, I was not able to reach the 30,000 or so points that I get by just having it not undervolted. Um, my peak was actually 33,700 points, but um, the clock on this card is rather jumpy, and that 33,700 was probably more a... Um, it, it, it was an abnormally high scoring run, um, run. I was trying to replicate it and only got to about 33,100 points. So I set 33,000 as my score to beat with an undervolt, but... Um, this is the best that the card can do. We are about 600 points short of the break-even point. So, yeah, um, for this card at least, undervolting it does not result in more performance. You just lose performance. Um, and a possible explanation for that are the settings. So, uh, when you look at the curve, I have it set at one volt exactly and 2010 core i cannot go higher in the core clock or it will crash and i cannot go higher in the voltage or it will run into the power limit so right now at least it doesn't power throttle but the core clock only going to 2010 and it starts at 2010 it goes down from there if the temperature gets higher is just not very high you can see when i was uh, running before i actually maxed at 2100 um, now, it wasn't holding that clock for all this time, but that's 90 extra megahertz that the card, at least for a short time, does run at. And even if it's then power throttling down, it looks like those short bursts to where it is able to sustain higher clocks um, just result in more performance. Um, so, yeah. Um, there is... Sadly, it doesn't work. Like, uh, sadly, uh, you can't get more performance by undervolting than just overclocking the regular way. There might be other cards where it could work a little bit better, but I don't really see any reasons why. Now, doing this is probably still faster than running the card stock, but it is slower than just not undervolting it and overclocking it the regular way at least on this card. So I have heard from some people that undervolting is faster than just overclocking the regular way and running it through the power limit, but 600 points is outside of margin of error, if you ask me. So at least for this card, uh, undervolting is not a way to get more performance, sadly.